Hello and welcome to Addis News Hour with the news. I'm Shifar Alako. Thanks for joining us. Prime Minister Abi Ahmed has welcomed today President Felix Tshisekedi of the Democratic Republic of the Congo and the current chairperson of the African Union. During the discussions, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed reiterated that Ethiopia continues to be committed to African solutions for African problems and to an African Union-led process under the facilitation of the current chair of the Union. He further emphasized Ethiopia's firm position that the GERD can be an icon of cooperation and mutual development among the downstream countries with a commitment of no harm to both. Ethiopia affirms its desire for an agreement that works for all parties in accordance with the Declaration of Principles. Premier Abiy has also appreciated the positive role the President is playing in bringing about positive outcomes in GERD negotiations. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs says election observers from international and domestic institutions are finalizing their preparation to attend the upcoming elections. Ministry spokesperson Ambassador Dina Mufti mentions the assurance of U.S. Special Envoy to Horn of Africa Jeffrey Feldman's commitment to strengthening strategic ties with Ethiopia in his press briefing given today. Demis McQuell reports. Uh, welcome to our briefing sessions. Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson Ambassador Dina Mufti gave his regular weekly press briefing concerning various diplomatic activities that were done during the previous week. The ambassador mentioned the discussion of the Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Demek Amakonen with the U.S. Special Envoy to the Horn of Africa, Jeffrey Feldman, as one of the major diplomatic engagements. According to the spokesperson, the discussion between the two sides included the current status of the humanitarian support and rehabilitation activities in Tigray, as well as the negotiations over the GERD and the Ethiopian Sudan border conflict, among other things. American Special Envoy to Horn of Africa has been also uh, visiting Ethiopia. He met a um, couple of Ethiopian of officials, among which he met Deputy Prime Minister yesterday, where he was briefed in detail on the current issues prevailing in the region, particularly on the trilateral negotiations, the forthcoming elections, and the Ethiopian-Sudan border situations. The Deputy Prime Minister has also reiterated Ethiopia's conviction in maintaining a strategic relationship with the United States. Uh, that Ethiopia would like to further enhance strategic relations with the U.S. Uh, the deputy, the, the special envoy also has expressed the commitment of the United States for strengthening relationship with, the, with Ethiopia. He also reiterated that the U.S. wants stable, democratic, and strong Ethiopia in the region. And uh, he said also Ethiopia is a strategic partner uh, in this part of, the, of Africa. Ambassador Dina also said the electoral process is well underway with a surge in voter turnouts. Dina also expressed observers from international and domestic institutions are finalizing their preparations to undertake their responsibilities. The EU has also announced to deploy an election expertise mission which will follow guidelines to carry out their duties as laid out by proper institutions in Ethiopia, according to the spokesperson. Well, with regard to the forthcoming elections, as you know, the electoral, uh, the preparations for the forthcoming six elections, national election is underway. The voters' reg registration is surging. Uh, code of conduct had been um, mapped out for those who contend. Uh, airtime has been allotted to the contending political parties. Uh, now the campaign has started actually and is underway. With regard to the observers, various observing groups have, uh, indicate, have indicated that they're going to come to observe. Mainly the African Union will observe, will send observer team to Reputable institutions, NDI and the IRA from the United States will, will arrive. They will come and observe. We do have also observers from the Russian Federation, uh, from Russia, uh, 
this is certain institute uh, that has this task of observing. The ambassador also mentioned the repatriation of 1,168 Ethiopian citizens from Kenya, Beirut, Saudi Arabia and Yemen during the previous week. Now, Ethiopian ambassador to Germany, Mulu Solomon, says the election process in Ethiopia is going in the right direction and the experts sent from the European Union will see and understand the real situations of the country, both on the side of the people and all the political parties, including the ruling party. It is what she said. All of us are trying to express the genuine stance or stand of our government and the stand of our uh, even opposition parties. All of them are now uh, having uh, trust in the in the electoral board in the Ethiopian election. That's why they come to compete. And people, even at this time of COVID, at this hard time, also people are still carefully trying to register and come up with, uh, with their cards to elect. All this process, we explain how things are going in a good direction, in the right direction. And we couldn't even understand why EU all of a sudden come up and say we are not coming because initially, when we were talking to them, they were ready to come and uh, observe. But over all of a sudden, when they come up with this, we couldn't understand what's going on. And uh, I hope even for EU who have been helping us for the election, who have been helping us for so many issues, uh, it may not be understandable why this decision come, but we believe still they will uh, go to this uh, correction and come up with so many issues while they are extending experts also. We believe their experts will understand the genuine condition of our country. She states that it is a great experience for the European Union and others to observe what is going to be the first ever and uh, free and fair election of Ethiopia after the reform. The Ethiopian government is uh, giving all the chances and uh, the competitors are now uh, trying to are introducing their uh, programs through the national television so that they express what they want, tell the people and compete freely. And this was what we would like to the Europeans and others to observe. Otherwise, we are not looking for anything else. But if they, if they are coming, it's good even for them to understand and see uh, the nice and the best type of uh, election ever in the country, because they have been observing even those which have a lot of elections, which have a lot of problems. And this time was a good uh, witness for uh, European Union or anybody who's coming in will be a great uh, experience for them to come and see what is happening in Ethiopia. Even with, through all these challenges, Ethiopia is preparing everything intact in a better condition to make it happen, to make it reliable, credible. That should be appreciated by any party, by any partner. The ambassador also underscores that the Ethiopian government believes that the European Union will continue its long-term partnership with Ethiopia in different issues. There must be something wrong or misunderstanding, but actually they have uh, initially were towards sending the um, uh, observer. Later on, they changed their mind as they announced that they are not sending an observer because Ethiopia was very reasonable uh, because the issues they raised, those acceptable issues were accepted by our government. But if other issues are not something which is not accepted to our government, and if it is not according to our uh, uh, understanding of uh, keeping the country's sovereignty, it may not be acceptable actually. But uh, now they have uh, decided to send the experts for, for observation. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe they will uh, more understand the genuine situation of Ethiopia, the real understanding of the country and the genuine stance of the government. Mm -hmm. And uh, we believe things will be fulfilled, but the fulfillment of the criteria set by the Ethiopian government should be ma maintained, should be kept, obviously. But we know EU uh, is a very good partner for Ethiopia and it will continue to, be, to consider such things in the future also. Now, moving on, the chief of the state of Amhara calls on the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, to promote Ethiopian stance of fair use of the Abai water to the global communities. This came at a panel discussion IGAD held in Barda City 
aiming at strengthening early actions to prevent potential conflict in the Horn region. Alulatik Lemarem takes it from here. The Intergovernmental Authority Development, IGAD, held a panel discussion in Barbara City, aiming at strengthening early actions to prevent potential conflict in the region. Speaking on the occasion, Chief of the Amhara State, Agenyo Teshagar, mentioned GERD and the Ethiopian borders, a potential cause of cross-border conflicts, citing the need to address it in a scientific way. We are making preparations to undertake the second filling of the GERD reservoir, but encircled by a lot of challenges coming in from external powers. Egypt and Sudan are collaboratively working to twist our hands while we are striving to develop our natural resources. Irrespective of all these challenges, we will fill the GERD as scheduled. We Ethiopians want to equitably and fairly use the Nile water with our Egyptian and Sudanese brothers and sisters. We don't entertain other intention than cooperation. Therefore, IGAD has the responsibility to create awareness among the international communities in this regard. In connection to this, we want IGAD to address security issues in the Ethiopian Sudan borders. As Sudan invaded our territory and displaced our farmers, it could instigate conflict between the two countries. A conflict research expert at the IGAD, Sembe Okelo, expressed the need to strengthen early actions to prevent conflict in the region. There is a great demand for proactive engagement and collaboration. Furthermore, the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, tabled the current security issue in Ethiopia and suggested the importance of intensifying scientific actions to prevent and manage conflicts. Ethiopia is the source of the Blue Nile and contributes over 85% of the Nile's stream flow. To this day, Egypt and Sudan are using 100% of the water, sticking to their 1959 colonial agreement between them. Not being signatories, Ethiopia and other upstream states do not recognize this agreement. Ethiopia is at the eve of completing the Great Renaissance Dam. Costing over 5 billion US dollars, that is being paid by ordinary Ethiopians. This dam will generate 5.1 gigawatt of power, and it is a non-consumptive, eco-friendly, existential necessity to millions. The three countries have been in dispute over the construction, filling and operation of this dam. Even thought this dam provides major benefits to Sudan and Egypt in terms of reducing evaporation loss, silt, sedimentation and unexpected flood. This dam is not just about generating power. It is a matter of survival for millions of Ethiopians who deserve a dignified life as their Egyptian counterparts. Welcome back. The chief of the state of Amhara, Aganyu Teshagar, has held talks with French ambassador to Ethiopia, Remy Maréchal. Aganyu called on France to continue its support to the Amhara region in the areas of heritage protection and development as well as urban infrastructure development. He also called on France to facilitate trainings for leadership in the region, briefing the French ambassador on the sixth general elections. The French ambassador to Ethiopia on his part said France is working to strengthen its long-standing diplomatic and economic ties with Ethiopia, reaffirming his country's commitment to supporting urban infrastructure and other sectors in the state of Amara. Have a listen. As a French ambassador, I, I visited the, the Amara region, as I visited earlier uh, other regions, because being ambassador to Ethiopia doesn't mean to stay in Addis. So it's important to meet uh, local actors, especially in the federal system. So uh, a flagship project, as you may know, uh, with the Amara region is, is the Heritage Protection Conservation uh, Project with, with the Lalibela churches. So this has been uh, initiated by uh, President Macron when he he made a paid a state visit uh, to Ethiopia and, and visited Lalibela. 
if Europe and France have uh, further strengthened their cooperation in the military, economic, cultural, and other fields, including the renovation uh, and promotion of St. Lalibola's churches. Uh, we, we've been working on this project for more than a year, and, and, and we have now completed uh, all the studies and are about to propose to the, uh, the federal government, but also to the, uh, to the steering committee in which the uh, Amara region is represented, uh, some solution for the long-term preservation and restoration of the churches. In addition to this, and, and in this region, as we do in other regions, uh, we have partnership between universities. Uh, we support the teaching of French language, but we also have scholarship. And, and we work together with the, the World Bank uh, for the cities of, of Bayardar and Gondar, but the same way we work also with uh, 18 other cities outside of the Amara region. Welcome back. You are still watching our Disney News Hour. The president of the Ethiopian Islamic Affairs Supreme Council, Grand Mufti Haji Omar Idris, has urged Muslims to mark the Eid al-Fitr holiday peacefully and in unison. The president has extended his greetings to all Muslims on the occasion of Eid al-Fitr celebration. Santayo Tamra presents the story as follows. President of the Ethiopian Islamic Affairs Supreme Council Grand Mufti Haji Omar Idris has extended greetings to all Muslims on the occasion of the 1442nd Eid al-Fitr celebration. <laughs> the Ethiopian Muslims here and abroad and Muslims around the world would like to say you happy 1442nd Eid al-Fitr. The president has also urged Muslims to mark the holiday peacefully and in Ninizan. Muslims are respected. They are people of manner and friendship. I'd like you to mark the holiday being together, respecting each other, praising Allah and helping the needy. Apart from this, our country is currently facing some challenges, so we need to pray so that these issues can be solved. The president further asked the Muslim community to adhere to COVID-19 control and prevention rules while celebrating Eid al-Fitr. 
Now moving on, Oromia Journalists Association President Nazif Jamal condemns the brutal killings of the Oromia Broadcasting Network OBN journalist by the terrorist militants. He says killing of journalists is unusual in Ethiopia, even in a wartime, and expresses his condolences over the death of the renowned journalist Sisai. He stated that the late Sisai was a strong journalist with a strong sense of publicity and good manners, and he wished the deceased to rest in peace. So, first of all, as a uh, uh, journalist association, we, uh, we are here to condemn uh, killing of uh, our member, uh, journalist Sisai Vida, who was uh, a member of, of a colleague of Oromia Broadcast Network. Uh, we condemn killing of journalists, wherever it happened, whoever does it, any journalist and media professional should be protected by all bodies. So the killing of uh, the journalists, very uh, senior journalists, is uh, tragic uh, and we really want to convey our condolences to his family, uh, his colleagues and relatives. Nazif also forwards his views that the government of Ethiopia should safeguard journalists and do its maximum protection to them, particularly during the upcoming sixth national election. Our message as Oromia Journalist Association is uh, anyone, any side, should protect journalists because journalists are there to tell their truth, not only one side. They have to understand that journalists are there to serve the community, including themselves, who are considering themselves as an opposition party. Understanding uh, this, they should protect journalists wherever they are, uh, even in the world. If war arises between them and the government, they have to uh, protect media professionals to convey their message to the public. We, uh, you remember, we have been um, watching them on uh, international media. Those are the journalists who are there to interview them and tell us about them. That's what they do. So anyone, including the government and the public, should protect journalists to the maximum and give them protection. And they have to live uh, safe and uh, tell us the truth. We have also other sad story. The founder of NIA Foundation, an indigenous Jewish center for children with autism, Zemi Yenus, has passed away in connection with COVID-19 induced health complications. She was attending coronavirus treatment for weeks in an intensive care and sharing some pictures showing her fight with the virus via social media and many were optimistic about her recovery. Her foundation is an indigenous, non-profit, and non-governmental humanitarian organization established from the beginning to alleviate the all-rounded challenges faced by persons with autism and other related developmental disorders and young men and women living in challenging socioeconomic circumstances. Having made the necessary multi-spectral preparations and forging partnerships with the government, National and international NGOs, NIA Foundation was legally registered and licensed in 2006.